Hey, Fadia. Uh, how are you? Um, so, so, yeah, let's go through some of these questions. So you did splining and it took a long while. Yes, that is for sure one of the biggest things. The first pass of splining takes one of the longest out of any part of your workflow, to be honest. But the good news is that you still have to give it two, three, four passes of splining. And those are going to go way faster because you've already done a bulk of the work. And then another big thing to remember is after your first spline pass, things are still going to be floaty and things are still going to be weird. And that's why you have your second spline pass where you go through it again. And maybe this time you don't go through all the graph editors and every drop, you look at it more as, oh, this part could be a little faster. Oh, this part could be a little sharper. Uh, maybe this foot can land a little bit more. And you start going in there and basically, you know, tweaking all sorts of little parts throughout your shot. And then you do it again in three, four, and then basically like four spline pass four, five, six is almost polishing. Um, I don't, there's not really a set number of how many passes you can go through and do this, but um, the first one's always the worst because you have to do so much work. You have to get it out of blocking, which is kind of like the hardest thing. But then after that, you're still left with this kind of floaty, mushy, still sort of thing going on. It's just a little bit better. So every phase, you're making it a little bit and a little bit better. So I really wouldn't freak out because that's just kind of how the animation thing goes. And just be confident that it is looking good. Your shot is looking good. You just have to go in there. And now you have to do basically the, the more fun sort of stuff as, as an animator, just tying stuff down, getting in there, adding all those little details, really pushing everything, which is kind of what distinguishes like an average animator from a hireable animator or a feature film animator or somebody that's going to work in big games animator is that, you know, they don't just say, oh, God, it's too much. I don't want to do this anymore. They're just like, okay, I got to like put my head down and keep going through this and adding all those details and... You know how to do this. Your your shots are going really well. You should feel confident and happy where where it's going. Um, you just have to, like, I don't know. The biggest thing with animation is wrapping your mind around how long this stuff really takes because it does really take a long time to make it look really, really good. And you're not the only one that's spending all this time, believe me. Tons of other people. I spend a lot of time. People that work in features spend a lot of time. Everybody spends a lot of time on these animations. So nobody in the world does this in... A day or 30 seconds or really fast with all these details uh, the only thing that that does happen is you get a little bit faster uh, the more you do this the more comfortable you feel and you just kind of progress through it but every shots different and every shot has little different obstacles to overcome so that's just kind of the time scale of it so I really wouldn't freak out that it's taking too long and oh my god you have to do all this stuff so that's why I encourage you to finish this shot see it through to the end because it's very important for an animator I think to never quit a shot because you don't have that option at a studio nobody's gonna say oh you can't do it alright that's fine you know then it's like well and even if they do give you that option you should be very careful because they're probably gonna fire you if they think you can't do this and you can do it you totally can do it you just have to like basically put your head down and keep working and grinding through it until Literally, you're like, I have literally nothing else to do. I've done everything. I've tracked every single arc. I've looked at the timing. It looks great. I have to show it to somebody and get feedback. And that's, I mean, you feel like you've done everything possible. That's when it might be a good sign that maybe you are almost done with this thing. So I encourage you to keep going through it because it's important to not only go through planning, blocking, and splining, but to see it to the end, to go through all those splining passes, to go through the polishing passes. Because a lot of people never go through that. They just rush through it, finish, they have a deadline and go on. And then they never really get to experience the full range of the shot, which you have to go through all the motions in order to learn these kind of steps in the process and then feel confident about the steps. And it's almost like knowing how long the race is, you know. You might, you know that if you ran the course once, you know how far it is. And by the time you're almost to the end, you're excited. You're, you know where it ends. You've been there. You've seen it you know, it's motivating you while like, if you never really do, you might say, oh, I'm just going to quit right here. I'm tired. My feet hurt. I don't want to run anymore. 
But if you're like, I'm just right there, I'm around the corner, I know I am, you're like going to get that second wind, you're going to get that boost of energy, I'm going to finish this, I'm going to do this. So I would say to keep going on the shot because no shot is ever done after one spline pass and two spline pass or three spline passes. So my advice would be to keep working on the shot for another week and then I'd even say to spend even one more week on the shot that way, this whole other week you have, you can go through as many spline passes as you want, then you'll get another critique, and then you could even have that whole other week of polishing, which you could even split that week into half polishing, half planning if you wanted to. But um, I think it's very good to give yourself that time to polish and have the luxury of having a lot of time to polish, because right, like, because a lot of times you won't have that luxury, and you're just gonna have to polish as fast as you can, as quickly as you can. So it's good to be able to do it slow, understand it, find these things, that way when you do get into AM or more of a production studio or any other professional job, you're going to know how it works, you're going to know how to do it, and you're going to do it way faster instead of kind of never experiencing polishing and when you get to it, not knowing how to approach it or how to deal with it. So I wouldn't give up on the shot. I think it looks good. Um... We all, every animator freaks out from blocking a spline and oh my god, what happened? But it's okay. There's things in, you did stuff in blocking for a reason. And now splining is just this grueling process that you just have to get through. And you just have to apply all the things you know. And then, you know, I always tell a lot of my tutoring students, six hours later, it will look better. Just keep that in the back of your head. In six hours, that little foot that you've been working on for six hours on doing one, one step will look better. You know, your whole entire shot, like however many frames, what, it, what are we, 215 frames, you're not going to do 215 frames in six hours. But if you're really stuck, you might get that foot to look amazing. It took you six hours, but it doesn't matter. It was a tough spot. You couldn't get it, but you did it. And it's those moments where things are really, really hard in animation that are going to make you a better animator. Because once you go through it, you're going you're gonna to probably think, I can't do this. Oh, my God. It's not working. Maybe I should have a new career. You're freaking out a little bit. But then it's like, okay, just relax. I'm going to keep working on it. Six hours, it will look better. And it does. And these things are so helpful to you in the future because you're going to keep running into these moments over and over in every single shot. No matter how simple or how confident you feel with a the shot, there will be a spot that is just kind of always getting to you. But that's when you need that moment where you're like, well, you know what? I was really stuck on that foot on three shots ago and I made it out of it you know I did it and it looks awesome and I love that part of it now my animation and so now so then when you're on your next talent next thing you're stuck you're going to remember back you say I got out of that I can do this one you know it gives you that that confidence to keep going so I would encourage you to keep pushing on the shot and I'd say give it another week of spline and then I'd say give it also next week after giving it this whole week of spline you can do half polish, half planning for your week. And I think that'd be a much better schedule. And you could really push the shot to be more of a portfolio piece instead of just kind of a practice shot. You know, oh, whatever, I'm just going to throw it away. Like, push it. See how far you can push a shot because it's important to push it to the point where you're like, wow, I literally have nothing. And nothing at all. I've gone through everything. Like, this thing is impeccable. You know, you got to have that sort of feeling, and I would take advantage of that because that's what people expect out of your portfolio, is for all your shots to feel that way, because in a portfolio, you have endless amounts of time to work on this. At a studio, you just have whatever amount of days, and that's what you got to finish it in, and everything's set, in, set like that, but, you know, when you have your own personal stuff on your reel, they're assuming that you have endless amounts of time which means that you have endless amounts of time to polish things. Like, nothing should have slipped through the cracks, basically. So, all right. And then... Uh, the knees. Yes. Uh, basically, um, you said it correctly. It's basic. What I use the most are those pull vectors and the stretch control to get the knees going. Like, if this is just... You know, um, if you stretch this knee out, you're not going to be able to tell that the knee's been stretched or shrank. I mean, if you have a, like an itty-bitty leg like this, 
you might tell, but you might even also get away with it, to be honest. Uh, so, you can actually do a lot from here to here with the knee. Um, just with the stretch. So, that's my biggest thing I use for the knee control. Another quick tip I can give you, though, is... It's basically this. I use the stretch control and the pull vectors. This guy doesn't have his pull vectors out. But it's all uh, pull vectors like you had and stretch control to get those knees. But another quick tip you can use is to track those knees, which this is really helpful. If you go to show your joints on your characters, on your character, you can select his knee joint, his actual knee joint. And with any like sort of tracking software, this is AMS. I don't know if you have access to this, but I know on like CG Talk and all those places, they have a bunch of different arc trackers. Um, if you select the knee, because sometimes you know this is only three poses right in here, so I only have three dots. Where are my dots? There they are. Oh, they're so small. Let's do that again. Like that knee. Alright, cool. So, um, so basically, by selecting, oops, there are my red dots. So, um, by using, by tracking just that knee joint inside the knees, you'll be able to kind of get all your dots and you know, that's when you'll see that maybe like this dot over here is actually goes back. So the knee goes forward and back and then it comes forward. And that's, you know, the point where you might want to take that knee, stretch it so that the dot matches up and then stretch this knee over here a bit. And it's all pretty painstaking work to be quite honest. Like there's no actual easy way of doing knees. You just kind of have to go through it and match those dots so that you know, your dots are all going through your arc. You know, everything's moving forward. You don't have any wonky dots that go back and then forward and then up and then weird stuff like that. You know, you want to have your nice dots. Uh, with that said, though, I would, you know, I always leave the knees to the last possible second, basically. Uh, so, because you have to have the hips perfect, you know, all your timing and stuff on the hips has to be just right and also the feet have to be just right because you can tweak these all you want um but they will still like if you adjust the hips it'll mess it'll adjust your knees so everything will get messed up with the knees so i would definitely make sure to have the, the body and the legs hips and the legs working really well before you go into the knees too much and then another big thing is having these pull vectors really far away from the knees also helps. So keeping them really far ahead of the character really helps. Same thing when you get a char the character with the shoulders and stuff, having the elbow pull vectors far away helps uh, so that these pull vectors don't go back here and start reversing and flipping inside themselves and weird stuff like that. So um, that's how it goes for knees. Luckily though, it's just this Bali character and these characters that have really like little legs and stuff that have the most kind of knee popping problems. Uh, most other characters won't have as much of weird knee stuff as this guy does. So that's something to feel better about. But still, you know, it's just using that stretch and that pull vector to follow the arc in your camera view and doing it almost kind of as the last, last thing where you have all the timing about ready and you know there might be there might be some spots where you literally will have to set a key on every you know single frame and stretch and this is even when I actually use my graph editor the most for the stretch because I might have to you know increase the knee like this much see how it's slightly moving a tiny bit like that so I, I this is the part where I really use my graph editor to push that knee little tiny bits of increments and and your graph editor might be doing something like then stretch it over here and then it's back here and it's really crazy and weird 
But sometimes you have to lay those little keys back to back to sort of get your knee to feel like this perfect, you know, it's flowing through its arc in this great little shape. You know, your graph editor might look awful and, you know, the leg might stretch, but it'll be fine. And nobody's going to be able to tell as long as you stay within this arc that the leg is stretching too far or too little. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so that is for those questions. Now let's go through your shot. Take a look at it. So I think um, one of the biggest things you can work on is timing. So right now, looks like the character goes like really a bit slow, and then I also feel like you could still exaggerate when the character jumps at the top of all these arcs for the hips. I think you can definitely make um, the top of that arc bigger, like that. I'd probably say that on almost every single jump because it kind of look, doesn't look, looks like he's not really leaving the ground very high, like he's very close to the ground. So I'd make those arcs a bit bigger at the top. That way, that so that you can, you know, when this character, his foot's leaving the ground, it's leaving the ground, but it's really kind of, it's almost, it's pushing off that ground, like you can feel that leg, you know, really pushing off the ground, as opposed to if the legs are always bent, and they just keep staying bent, it doesn't look like you're getting that graphic, like, shape from a bend to a straight to a bend, you know, it doesn't have to be a full straight either, just to really feel more of that, that push. And then, let's see, five... Right now it's 5 to about 14, so you're spending um, 9 frames for the character to get up, when I think you could actually do that in maybe like 6 frames, you know. Make it snappier, you know, like bounce, 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 not bounce, bounce. And you're making it faster here. 15 to 16 but it's like also kind of remember that when it's just the same thing as as the bouncing ball you know as it's going up the dots um you know he's going up against gravity and your dots are about that space and then when he gets to the top he's kind of hovering a little bit right that air but then once he starts going down these dots all start spreading faster and faster and your character right here He's going up, but right here he hangs. And then right here on frame 12, he's starting to come down. And 13, he's also going down, but he's still traveling a very small amount. Once he starts that descent down, which is basically frame 12, 11 to 12, he starts down. 12 to 13, he needs to go farther. 13 to 14, he needs to go farther. See how he's barely moving and he's going down? So you have to make sure that once you start coming down, that speed starts it starts incrementing right from the first frame he goes down. And that's the whole part where you're going to go into your graph editor and on your translate y, you know, you might have something like this. But this is a part where right here on this frame, well, let me actually open these up a bit. Ignore the legs and all that crazy stuff. But on the translate Y over here, um, these are the parts where 
you know, right here on frame 5, I'm going to exaggerate it a bit more, right here on frame 5, this, it's going down now. Like, if you look at it, you know, at frame 4, if we were to track this like this, exactly, it's at 1 in frame 4. If we were to put a dot right here, now we're like somewhere at like 0.9 in frame 5. So we're already going down here, basically. So what you want to do is, you know, you want to push this down. You want to break these tangents, break them, and you want to push this down, you know, even farther. And it's going to push, you know, if you look at your character here, like we'll go to frame 5, and we'll put a dot, I'll put a dot right here so we can see the difference. Frame 4, and then here's frame 5. Here is frame 5 with just the default it gives us. It hasn't even gone down. It doesn't feel like it's going down. Here's frame 6. It's, this thing is like barely dropping down, right? And we want something better. So let's push this a bit farther, right? So now at frame 5, I'll draw it with these blue dots. I'm here. And at frame 6, we're coming down. So see how the difference between these red ones and the light blue ones? And this is just from manipulating your graph editor so that now it's coming down fast instead of leaving sort of this default like similar timing. So I'd go in there in, into your shot and get that stuff working properly. Then again with the legs here this one leg, the green leg, has to feel like it's it's coming faster, faster forward than the other one because it jumps and then it's got to go like that. It's got to jump ahead of the whole everything else. So it's kind of like if it goes up, you know, by here it should be um, here. This leg should be out here, you know, and then. By here, almost by frame 13, this leg should be, should be already be like this, you know, like, it doesn't have to be a full straight, but it has to be, the heel already has hit the ground, like, it's, this, or it's, it's basically almost arrived there, it's right above it, and then on frame 14, like, we are on there, you know, so you gotta feel that sort of, stretching the, the leg reaching out to get it like right now everything's just kind of like this slow like you're afraid to break it you're afraid to mess with anything but these are this is the pass where you have to go in there and you know tweak these up and downs you know make sure that this leg feels like it's ahead of this blue one it's almost ahead of the body reaching out to land so that you know your body has somewhere to land And then, same thing here, you know, uh, it, it might be also happening for all, all your steps, really, where it's like, the ball is starting to come down, the hips, the ball is starting to come down, and this green foot is not in place to catch it. Like, once our body, just do it yourself, jump, and you're going to find that whatever foot you're going to land on, is already ahead of you. It moves a lot faster than everything else because it's the one thing you're going to land on. So your body isn't going to start coming down with that foot almost already not being there. So keep a close eye, like right here. At frame 24, we start going down. So at frame 24, you know, this foot needs to be like almost there already. And then at 25, bam, it has hit the ground. It's arrived. And 26, it's, 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 foot is slammed, it's flat, you know, to, to really basically push uh, those, those, the at beginning foot a little bit more. And, you know, just making those little tiny tweaks on all these steps. And I think the biggest thing is going to be 
um, pushing those ups and downs, you know, to get, this is the top of your arc. Have them be up here. Oops. Have them, you know, have the top of his head be here instead of down here. See what you get. Even try going higher so that, and what's going to happen, I think, is that these legs are going to be able to stretch and pull themselves. So it feels like there's more power in there. Alright, so let's keep going through this. Right here in this jump, feels like he kind of lands a bit too far back. The ball should be a little bit more here. I think it's because in all the other jumps, he's got these like little baby arcs that are like, whoop, because he's, the spots, the spaces are really close where he needs to jump. But then in this final one, he actually jumps a bigger distance. So I think um, you can move him forward so he doesn't look like he's falling back. Yeah, so it's almost like he's a little bit more forward here as well. And you know, keep right here especially, keeping an eye that when you're tracking your ball character right here he gets stuck in the air you know like I track him at the center when, when you select if you saw right here once you select it it gives you that your cursor and I put the dot right in the middle so right now your character is going through and then right here frame 84 it's almost like he's frozen in, in the air right there See, the body hasn't actually gone anywhere. So you got to make sure to keep all your dots flowing, moving forward. Same thing with the knees. Like, all all your characters, everything, everything's moving forward. So you can never have these dots kind of reverse themselves or, or be stuck on top of each other. They always have to be moving forward. So keep that in mind. And again, same thing here, you know, as, as, you, as the body's coming down, this leg needs to be a little bit more dramatic. You know, it's, it's reaching out. And then bam, the, the rest, so then as the body comes down, you know, this leg starts to bend and, and catch the weight of the hips. And then here, you know, once again, cleaning up these poses so that this foot is over here. I think you can even lift this up a bit more so that you can see this leg a bit more clearly. You could stretch it out so it feels like he's really doing this big pivot if you were to track this and coming around instead of this kind of like thing like this. You know, not letting this foot freeze on you over here, this blue foot. Basically, keep going and, and tracking all this stuff so that, you know, this green foot will probably stay on the ground a lot longer. And then it comes up just a tiny bit really quick to flip around. Keeping everything else flipping or going, following its path. The ball as well, right now it's just pivoting in place right here. When, you know, you need to get that those dots to go around, to go up, and then follow this around. You know, to really, to really sell it. I know it's hard work. Believe me, I know it's hard work. But this is kind of what we do with animators. So, and here, when the foot, the blue foot goes back, you know, when you come back here, and then when you start to go forward, you have to round off this arc. You know, see how right here, the foot just arrives at one eleven, and then it's coming back forward. So it's kind of like it just did this. It got here and then it came back. When you need to, at 112, maybe this foot needs to be a little bit farther back to get on so that it kind of actually goes around and forward. 
So you got to be sure to round off those arcs and those edges. So that you never have, you know, these dots that get there. And then we're going here and then we go. It's like we're going here and then we just come straight back to here. No, you got to make sure that if you have four keys here, you got to make sure that you round off these dots so that it feels like the toe flows right through here and comes back through. Um, those are just all the little details of sort of being a, a, a professional in this business. Here again, like this, you could probably leave this foot still planted here. You know? Leave it to the last minute, almost, and then, and then have it go quickly and land in front of the other foot. You know, so you're getting those that feel of this stretch. Cool, and then I think the second pass on the way back actually the feet feel a lot better. Um, these toes feel a little floppy, like a little too floppy. Like they're just doing a little bit too much of this. Like they just kind of look a little too like loose, like there's no bones in there. So I would tone down um, the floppiness of the feet, you know, like when he lands. Have this be a little bit less steep. And then also the you know, this little toe, not as high up, maybe a little bit less. Just so you tone it down, just so it feels like, you know, it's like all these overlappy things shouldn't be something that you see necessarily. Right now, like we see a lot, so it feels like all gooey, like there's no bone. It's more something that you feel. So the audience just feel it, not necessarily see it. Um, so I would be, so I would tone that down a bit because it's looking a little floppy right now. And then here on this last little bit, when the character lands and he comes up, be sure that every time a character stops or lands somewhere, there's always that kind of like residual dying down of energy. So it's like he lands and it's like this up and down settle. Okay. Not just like land and the character just freezes on you. So have him, you know, I even think this foot this green foot could probably land by frame 200 as well. And they're kind of in this down position. And then they come up here at like 205. And then maybe by like 210 or something, you know, this ball comes down a bit. So that you kind of have this down, up, down. And then maybe another little tiny bit up so that the ball goes up just a tiny, tiny bit. It's not really moving forward. It's just going up a little bit. So you're kind of getting this like up and down little settle till the shot ends and it's come to its nice little settle. And I know it's more work, but you know, that's what we do as humans. Like you got to remember that in your animation is that we have forces and we have energy. And when character stops, we don't just fully come to a stop. You know, our hips have to stop and settle. And even, you know, the hips, when they arrive here, you can do with what we were talking about with the toe where you round off that edge. So it's like, although... The character is moving forward once he hits here. You have him go a little bit forward and then back around, and then he settles. You know, so it's not, and that's not just the up and down movement, but it's also this kind of little forward and coming back to catch that that force and energy of moving forward to now coming to a stop. So I hope all these notes make sense, and I think it's looking really good. Um, this part over here, you have to clean it up the most, I think. But I think you've kind of probably done the least amount of work there. So it's just a matter of putting in the time and putting in the work. So, And I think the shot's in a really good place. So I would just keep going with it. Keep cleaning it up. Um, keep tracking those dots. Making sure that, you know, everything's moving forward. You don't have any dots that are kind of backtracking on you anywhere. 
You don't have any of this weird wonky stuff, you know, thoughts are all going forward, everything flowing through. Even if, you know, you're, even if we're going this way and then coming back this way, we're not going to leave those edges sharp, you know, we're going to round off those edges. Everything's going to flow through. You know, arcs and dots will kind of help you solve so many of, of these weird glitchy problems, it's amazing. So, make sure that, you know, you're going through all those and getting all that stuff cleaned up. And I know it's a lot of work, but just do it, you know, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and keep going through, and I think you'll be fine through this shop. Okay, so hope all that stuff makes sense. Email me if you have any questions or anything, and keep going because it is looking really good. Um, and don't worry if it's getting hard, if you're biting too much that you can handle because that's kind of the only thing that's going to make you grow as an animator is challenging yourself every single time. And I don't think you're doing something that's too overly complicated. I think you're at a pretty good challenge. You know what you're doing in animation, you know, fairly well, you're in a good spot and you're just challenging yourself a little bit, but I don't think you're like challenging yourself so much that I'd say, you know what, this is too much. You need to go back and do something simpler. I think you're kind of right at that perfect amount of challenge, I suppose, to keep, to make it hard for you because it has to be hard so that you can learn from it and become a better person on your next shot or become a better animator, I guess, in the next shot that you do. So keep going and email me if you have any questions or anything. And hopefully you agree with spending one more week on this and then even another half week next week uh, to still polish it off so that way you really give this shot its due time and I think you'll be a lot happier a week and a half of work from now keep working on this to say wow I'm glad I didn't give up on it it looks really great you know it was really hard to get through like this little turn at the end but now I love it I can't, I'm really glad I spent that time in there and that's that's how you're gonna feel like you'll always love the most of your shot is the parts that are super hard at least it happens for me all the time. The parts that I struggle with most of them, when it's done and it looks great, I'm like, wow, I just love it. I just can eat those frames up. It's great. It becomes my favorite part, and it's always the part that you found the hardest to be your favorite. At the end, of course, when everything's done and everything's great. So keep at it, and email me if anything. All right. Bye. Good luck.